Here we're going to look at a solution to a problem from the 2019 International Mathematical Olympiad. This is question four. And so this problem was suggested by a viewer. So if you guys want to suggest a problem, just leave it in the comments. Okay, so the goal is to find all natural numbers k and n satisfying this equation. So on the left hand side, we have k factorial. On the right hand side, we have this product, which starts with 2 to the n minus 1 then 2 to the n minus 2, the next one is 2 to the n minus 4, then 2 to the n minus 8, all the way up to 2 to the n minus 2 to the n minus 1. So our product is ascending in powers of 2 in this second term that's being subtracted from each part. Okay, so before we get into the solution, let's look at a couple of hints. So the first hint is really true for any type of problem where you have to find a solution to some outrageous looking equation. And that is there are probably only a handful of solutions, like one, two, or three solutions for this equation. And so the idea is you want to show that after a certain point, it's impossible for there to be a certain solution. In other words, after some value of n or after some value of k, it's impossible for this uh, equation to be satisfied. Then um, really into the heat of how to do this problem, you want to count the number of times each expression is divisible by 2. So in other words, how many times can you divide 2 out of this right hand side versus the left hand side? So maybe go ahead and pause the video, give this problem a go with these hints, and then we'll look at the solution. Okay, hopefully you tried this problem with the hints. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at the solution. We're gonna use the second hint, which said, how many times can you divide two out of each one of these expressions? The right-hand side versus the left-hand side. It's a little bit easier to do on the right-hand side, so let's work on that first. So let's notice that we can rewrite the right-hand side in the following way. I can factor a two out of this term, the next term I can factor a two squared out because I have two to the n minus four. All the way up to this term right here, I can factor a two to the n minus one out. So maybe let's write that down a little bit explicitly. So we have two to the n minus one, then we have two to the n minus two, then we have two to the n minus four, two to the n minus eight, that's two cubed, all the way up here ending at two to the n minus two to the n minus one. So like I just said, I can pull a two out of here. I can pull a two squared out of here. I can pull a two cubed out of here. And finally, I can pull a two to the n minus one out of this last term. So notice uh, if I do that, I'll get two to the, and then we can use the exponent rule to combine all those together. So I have one plus two plus three plus all the way up to n minus one. So that's what I get after I pull out of those all those two twos out. And now I have two to the n minus one, that's this first term, two to the n minus one minus one, all the way down to two minus one. That's what I get if I pull two out of this very last term. Great, now I wanna use the fact that this guy right here is a triangular number. In other words, it's the sum of the first n minus one natural numbers. And there's a nice closed formula for that. So I'll let you guys look that up if you need to, but that should be like standard fare if you're preparing for a math Olympiad. That is n times n minus one over two. So in other words, we've taken this right hand side and we've written that as two to the n times n minus one over two times something else. Okay, great. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is look at the left hand side. So look at the left hand side of this is k factorial. So we need to count how many factors of two are in k factorial. So let's just go ahead and write that as one times two times three times four all the way up times k. So notice every other number here is even and you get a multiple of two from each of those even numbers but then every fourth number is a multiple of four, so you get an extra multiple of two. Every eighth number is a multiple of eight, so you get an extra multiple of two. So in other words, we need to count how many even numbers are in this list, how many multiples of four are in this list, how many multiples of eight, 16, and so on and so forth are on this list. So counting the multiples of two is not too bad. We can just divide k by two and then take the floor. That's how many multiples of two we have. Great. And we get a power of two for each of those. And then how many multiples of four? We have k over four, and then we take the floor of that. So that's how many multiples 
of four we have. And then we have k over eight multiples of eight and so on and so forth. Okay, so in other words, we can write k factorial and we can write it as two to the floor of k over two plus the floor of k over four plus the floor of k over eight. And you might say, well, where do we stop here? Because we'd probably wanna write this in some sort of closed form with summation notation. But the answer is we don't ever really need to stop because at some point the denominator will be larger than the numerator and we'll just be adding a bunch of zeros on. So we have this, this is gonna stretch on forever and then we're gonna have times just some other number which is whatever's left over after factoring those twos out. So now let's go ahead and put all those together. So we have two, and now we have the sum m equals one to infinity of the floor of k to the two to the m, k over two to the m, and then times a bunch of other stuff. Okay, great. So our major goal is for this expression to be equal to this expression, but it's impossible for those expressions to be equal unless these multiples of two that we factored out of them are equal, in other words, unless these exponents in the power of two are equal. So let's see, that means that we will need n times n minus one over two to be equal to the sum m equals one to infinity of k over two to the m. And now we're gonna make another leap here and instead of looking at this equality, we're gonna start building an inequality which will allow us to finish this solution. And notice I can take off the floors here if I make sure to put an inequality here. So notice that this is less than the sum m equals one to infinity of k over two to the m. But that's just a classic geometric series and that adds up to k. Notice we could factor a k out of that, and then we have a half plus a fourth plus an eighth, and so on and so forth, and that adds up to the number one. So now let's look at the extreme left and right-hand side of this, and this is an extremely important inequality which we have constructed, that in order to have a solution here, we need n times n minus one over two to be less than k. So that's a good place to stop for this board. I'll bring that to the top and we'll move on to the next step. Up to this point, we've argued that if we have a pair of numbers k and n that produce a solution to this equation, those numbers have to satisfy this inequality. So we have n times n minus one over two is less than k. So this is actually a little bit more helpful than it might seem at first, because that's gonna allow us to create an inequality with only one variable and that variable will be n. And so we can do that by taking this inequality and building a new one just by taking the factorial of both sides. But then we know the factorial of the right hand side can be written in terms of n like this. So in other words, we have n times n minus one over two, and then the quantity of that factorial needs to be less than k factorial, but k factorial, if we have a solution to this equation, is equal to two to the n minus one times two to the n minus two, all the way up to two to the n minus two to the n minus one. So let's reiterate what we have. So the n portion of our solution needs to satisfy this inequality. Okay, great. And then the goal from here to the end will be to show that this inequality in fact does not hold for sufficiently large values of n. So let's go ahead and write that down. So show this is false for n, like I said, sufficiently large. And what we will do is show that it is false for n bigger than or equal to six. And you might say, well, what is the motivation for coming up with this number six? Well, I think you would probably do a little bit of experimentation on this inequality. And notice that if you are bigger than six, it's it seems to be untrue. So let's put this statement down into a claim which is written a little bit more carefully. So we have four n bigger than or equal to six. We want n times n minus one over two quantity factorial to be bigger than this right hand side. In other words, that's gonna force there to be no solution for n bigger than or equal to six. But it's actually hard to work with this guy by itself. But what we can do is we can make something bigger than this by replacing all of these with two to the n. Notice that's gonna create something bigger. 
and that will give us two to the n, but we have n copies of those, so in other words, we have two to the n squared. So let's just reiterate what's going on here. Notice that that is equal to two to the n times two to the n, and we have this happening n times, but that's most definitely bigger than two to the n minus one, all the way down to two to the n minus two to the n minus one. Great. And then let's see what we've got. If we've got n bigger than or equal to six, and we have a solution, then this inequality holds and this inequality holds, but those are contradictory. In other words, if we prove this claim, there will be no solution for all n bigger than or equal to six, and then we just have to check n equals one, two, three, four, and five by hand. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this proof goes. So we're gonna use induction, and the base case for our induction will be n equals six, and that's because that's the smallest place where this is actually true. So let's go ahead and start with this left-hand side. So we have six times six minus one over two quantity factorial. So that's gonna be equal to 15 factorial. Now what we wanna do for that is write it all out because we're going to replace parts of this descending product with powers of two in order to build this inequality, which is necessary. So we're gonna write that as 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 to one. And like I said, we're gonna take portions of this descending product and replace them with powers of two, creating something that is smaller and thus creating this necessary inequality. So we'll take everything from 11 down to eight and we replace all of them with two cubed, but notice there's four terms there. So we'll replace them with two cubed to the fourth power. So that's two to the 12th. And then we'll take everything from seven down to four and replace that with two squared. But again, there's four of those. And we'll take three and two and replace those with two. Um, and then we have two of those. Okay, so notice that is gonna create something smaller. So I can put that this 15 factorial is bigger than 15 times 14 times 13 times 12. But now notice we take that and then we multiply it by two to the, now we have 12 plus eight plus two, so that is 22. Great, and now the next thing to notice is that this guy in here is bigger than two to the 14. So I'll let you guys check that, but you can easily check that kind of by hand. This is on the order of like 16,000, and this is on the order of like 32,000. So this one is bigger than that one, so that means if we replace this product with two to the 14, that's gonna give us, this thing is bigger than two to the 36, which is equal to two to the six squared. And so we've established this claim at our base case of n equals six. So now I'll erase this and we'll do the induction step. Okay, so now we're ready for the induction step. So we're gonna go ahead and suppose this is true for n and then consider the n plus first case. In other words, the n plus first case is n uh, times n plus one. I'm gonna go ahead and write that as n squared plus n over two factorial. So like I said, that's the n plus first case. So now we wanna expand this out into a factorial ending at this term right here, which we know something about. So in other words, we'll have n squared plus n over two, that'll be our first term. Then we have n squared plus n minus two over two. So notice if I subtract two from the numerator like that, I'm really subtracting one from the whole thing. And then I have n squared plus n minus four over two, all the way down to, so let's just notice that I wanna end at n squared minus n over two. So the one right before that, will be equal to n squared minus n plus two over two. So let's see what we've got going on here. We have this n times n minus one over two factorial, which we know something about by our induction hypothesis. And then we've got this product of terms that builds it up to our current case. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply the induction hypothesis to this. So like I said, the induction hypothesis tells us that this term right here is bigger than two to the n squared. So I can replace that term, which I have orange overlined with two to the n squared, if I put an inequality here, and then I'll just bring this string of a product down. So I have this is bigger than n squared plus n over two, all the way down to 
n squared minus n plus two over two times two to the n squared. Now the next thing to notice is if n is bigger than or equal to six, each of these terms right here is bigger than or equal to eight. So that's pretty easy to check. So I won't do that really carefully. So like I said, each of these is bigger than eight. But then we have n terms in this product. So that makes this thing bigger than eight to the n times two to the n squared, but that's equal to um, two to the three n times two to the n squared. But now we're placing with three n with two n plus one, that's gonna be bigger th than two to the two n plus one times two to the n squared. And now we can see it all coming together. That's equal to two to the n squared plus two n plus one, which is equal to two to the n plus one squared. So notice looking at the extreme left and right hand side of this inequality, we have proven the n plus first case after assuming the nth case. And so that finishes the proof of this claim. Okay, so I'll go ahead and bring everything that we need up to the top of the board and we'll finish this thing off. We've worked pretty hard to argue the following facts. So if n and k form a solution to this equation, in other words, our goal equation, then n times n minus one over two factorial has to be less than this product two to the n minus one all the way down to two to the n minus two to the n minus one. And then furthermore, we just got done proving that if n is bigger than or equal to six, the opposite inequality is satisfied. In other words, n times n minus one over two factorial is bigger than that product involving powers of two. So the takeaway here is that there are no solutions with n bigger than or equal to six, because if we did have a solution with n bigger than or equal to six, well, we would have these contradictory inequalities being satisfied simultaneously. So now all we have to do is check by hand n equals one, n equals two, three, four, and five. So let's go ahead and look at n equals one. And so notice for n equals one, that's just gonna be two to the one minus one. So that's one, but that's exactly equal to one factorial. So in other words, n equals one, k equals one is a solution. So now let's look at n equals two. So here we're gonna have uh, two squared minus one times two squared minus two. Great, so that's gonna be four minus one, which is three times four minus two, which is two. So that's gonna give us six, but that's equal to three factorial. So that gives us another solution of n equals two, k equals three. That's another solution. So now let's go ahead and look at the next one. So n equals three. So that's gonna give us two cubed minus one times two cubed minus uh, two times two cubed minus two squared. Okay, so let's see what that is. That's gonna be equal to seven times, and now we have eight minus two, which is six. And then finally, we have eight minus four, which is four. Okay, now multiplying all those together, you get 168. But then it's not too hard to check that five factorial is equal to 120 and six factorial is equal to 720 and 168 is obviously right in between those two. And then maybe I'll leave it to you guys to check that n equals four and n equals five also give no solution for a similar reason to n equals three, just kind of more involved with bigger numbers, but there's nothing fancy going on there. So in the end, we have exactly two solutions. One of them is this ordered pair one, one, and the second one is this ordered pair two, three. Okay, that's a good place to stop.